Hey boys and girls, it's Miss Natalie from Room 5. Happy Cinco de Mayo week. As you know, Cinco de Mayo each year is a day to celebrate the Mexican heritage. Uh, so today I thought I could read a book about a famous Mexican artist named Frida. This is a story all about her life. And after we're finished reading, we will do a craft together. So let's get started. Frida by Jonah Winter. Illustrated by Anna Wan. Frida. Wow, look at that beautiful illustration. Nice big sun. Frida enters the world. For little Frida, the world is Mexico. Her house is a blue house. It is in the town of Coyoacan. Frida's father is an artist and a photographer. He teaches her how to use a paintbrush. Frida's mother takes care of six daughters. Often, she is tired. Often, Frida is lonely, even though she has sisters. Enter stage left, Frida's imaginary friend. Her name is also Frida. <laughs> they play games. All of a sudden, Frida falls very ill. She's in bed for months. There's something wrong with one of her legs. Even her imaginary friend can't cheer her up. That's when Frida teaches herself how to draw. Drawing saves her from being sad. After Frida gets well, she still wants to make art. So she paints little paintings. They are copies of other paintings. Painting onto photographs is what Frida's father does for a living. He teaches her how to do this too. Frida also paints things she sees through a microscope. She loves looking at things very closely. At school, Frida studies science. She is bored. School is too easy. One day, Frida is riding the bus home from school. A horrible accident happens. A trolley runs into the bus. Frida almost dies.
in the hospital, it is painting that saves her once again. Painting is like her imaginary friend. It is there whenever she wants it. It keeps her company. It keeps her from giving up hope. After the accident, life will never be the same for Frida. She will walk with a cane when she is able to walk. Her body will hurt always. But Frida doesn't cry or complain. Instead of crying, she paints pictures of herself crying. When she can't leave her bed, she paints in bed. When her whole torso is put in a cast, she paints on the cast. Nothing can stop Frida from painting. Because she's so often alone, unable to leave her house, she has to use her imagination. She paints what she sees in her heart on top of what she sees with her eyes. It's almost like painting on photographs. She paints little magical scenes with words at the bottom. All over Mexico, people paint these kinds of scenes. Sometimes they are scenes of accidents with angels coming to the rescue. They are like prayers for people who are sick. They are called exvotos. Frida paints exvotos of herself when she is sick or in pain. Frida imitates no one in her, in her style. Her paintings are like nothing else. In museums, people still look at them and weep and sigh and smile. She turns her pain into something beautiful. It is like a miracle. Viva Frida! Long live Frida. The end. I hope you all enjoyed that story about Frida. She really does a great job of taking a not so nice situation and turning it into something positive by painting. I love that. So now I would like, since Frida has inspired me to touch into my creative side today. I would like to do a craft with you all. Um, the supplies that you will need for this craft are a toilet paper roll, two rubber bands, two pieces of wax paper cut into three inch circles, some rice or anything hard and small that you can put inside of the toilet paper bowl to shake and make noise. And then whatever art supplies you would like to use like paint or paper, markers, crayons, whatever you have at home uh, to decorate it. So what we'll be making is a maraca, which is a musical instrument that they really like to use in Mexico where Frida is from. So um, to make this, Maraca. Uh oh, where did my toilet paper roll go? There it is. We will start with the toilet paper roll. And friends at home, you all can decorate this however you want. Families, if you are going to be using um, a paintbrush or a marker or crayon, um, you can have the student hold it in their hand. And if they have a little trouble gripping it, uh, you can help them by holding your hand over theirs. But I would really love for them to hold it themselves, and maybe you could just help them at their elbow to move it if they're not moving um, their hand on their own. But however you wanna do it. Um, if you wanna do paper, 
uh, you can have the child help you cut the paper by um, pressing their switch if they have something at home that they're using that is switch-like. Like, like um, I know one of my students is using an upside down yogurt cup, which is perfect, or um, a peanut butter jar lid, something like that. So if they have their hand on their switch, that means that they are ready to cut. And that's when you can use your scissors to help cut the paper. Uh, so then cut the paper and you can glue it onto your toilet paper roll. Decorate it however you want, guys. Once it is decorated and dry, we will begin to make the maraca. Uh, we have this piece of wax paper that we'll put on the top of the toilet paper roll and kind of curl it around so that it lays flat. And we will secure it with the rubber band. There we go, it should look like that. Then dump the rice, or in my case, I have lentil beans. I just had laying around in my cabinet. Uh, inside of the toilet paper roll. Not too many, just a little bit. And then cover the other side of the toilet paper roll with the wax paper. If you don't have wax paper, you could use something else like tin foil or even just a piece of paper. Anything that will stay secure on there. All right, so then once you have both sides covered, you are ready to shake. And this is really nice because it is a good size for our students who might not have the best grip. They can still hold on to it because it's nice and big. And then shake your arm. To shake your maraca. <laughs> All right, guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's activity. Happy Cinco de Mayo. Hopefully, you guys can listen to some music and shake your maracas later to celebrate. All right, I will see you guys soon. Bye.